the year 2020 when the world changed. Amen. Look so neighbor says it's good to be here. It's good to be here. Amen. While we are standing, we gotta get to our text, but let us go ahead and decree our statements of faith. I told you this morning that you can't birth what you don't believe. All right. You can't conceive what you don't believe. So regardless of how many times we say it, you got to believe it. Look at say you got to believe it. Amen. With that in mind, let's lift those hands in the presence of the Lord and say, I am healed in the name of Jesus. I am prosperous in the name of Jesus. I am favored in the name of Jesus. I am delivered in the name of Jesus. I am wealthy in finances in the name of Jesus. I'm victorious in the precious name of Jesus. Somebody give God some praise this morning. 1 Kings 15, verse 9 through 14. Amen. Again, we have a Eucharist, a Eucharist this morning. We have our, our communion. And so we are going to cut it off a little short so that we can not go over too long. And uh, so we should be fine this morning. First Kings 15, verse 9 through 14. If you have it, say, I got it. I got it. Let's read. And in the 20th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, reigned Asa over Judah. And 40 and one years reigned he in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Micah, the daughter of Mishalom. And Asa did that was right. He had a testimony in the eyes of the Lord, as did David his father. And he took away the sight of mice out of the land and removed all the idols that his fathers had made. And also Micah, his mother, even her, he removed from being queen. Because she had made an idol in a grove. And he destroyed her idol and broke, burned it by the brook Kibron. But the high places, the local shrines, were not removed. Nevertheless, Asia's heart was perfect with the Lord all his days. Drum roll, please. I have an important announcement. Amen. We're going to welcome him, Jesus, into this place once again. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome with immense pleasure Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Let's give God a praise. We're showing up every time we come. We want to welcome you into this place. We want to have a ceremony of welcoming and dedication of the presence of the Lord. Of the Lord. God be glorified today. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Again, we are practicing our social distance, amen, procedures throughout the services and until further notice. All right. We, we learned this morning of Mother Green that the spirit of resurrection is in this place today. Amen. The spirit of resurrection. Amen. I believe that if you bring a dead man in, he's going to have to get up this morning. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The spirit of resurrection is in this place. Amen. I believe if you got a bill in your purse, you need to get it out. The spirit of resurrection. <laughs> I know some, some women keep bills in their purse. You need to take that out and let it. And amen. Let God do something with those finances. The spirit of resurrection is in this place. Resurrection is taking place all over this building. I know it may not be many of us here, but the ones that are here, this is, this, you don't look at your name and say, I'm about to be resurrected. I'm about to be resurrected. The resurrection is taking place all over the building. Jesus, the resurrector, I don't know if that's the right, the right word. I've never heard of resurrector, but I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to do my grammar best I can. But Jesus, the resurrector, has come to deliver you from captivity. Amen. Anybody got some things they need loose? Amen. Yeah. And if I, were, if, I, if I knew, I know one of the things that may have you bound a little bit is some finances. Amen. Right. And, and I talk about finances because often, because sometimes that's what we need the most. 
Uh, you know, the Bible says money what? Answer. Anybody got some things they need money to answer for them? Anybody got, if you if, if everything is perfect in your life, you got just got, you book cool, man, I need to see you after service. I really do. Amen. I just think you're going to be a God blessing to me. Amen. This morning. But, but, but m m many times, the thing that hinders us the most is what? Our finances. Amen. If you had your finances, you'd have had your house built by now, wouldn't you? Amen. amen. So, amen. So, but I believe Jesus is resurrecting, amen, everything that, that the enemy, amen, is bound, binding us. Amen. amen. There are people who believe that you are not going to rise any higher mm -hmm. than where you are right now. But I believe the devil is a lie. You will experience a resurrection higher than where you are right now. I mentioned that this morning. Something the enemy thinks where you are is the status quo. But look at they have gone up higher. Amen. Paul said, I'm reaching higher to toward the mark of the what? Higher prize in Christ Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, listen, is not exclusive to Jesus only. All right, come on now. But it includes all believers. Yeah, come on now. The resurrection is the proof. Listen, the resurrection is the proof that we too will experience a resurrection. Not just when we die, but while we are living. Listen, you don't have to physically die to have a resurrection. All right. Hey. Oh, somebody didn't get that went over their head. But but let's go to Romans chapter 6, verse 3. You don't have to be in the grave or in a casket or in a morgue to have a resurrection. In Romans chapter 6, verse 3 through 5, it says, Paul says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ was baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried. This is what he says. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. To have a resurrection, there must first be a death of something. No death of, of some kind, no resurrection. There must be a baptism unto death of sin for you to experience a resurrection in Christ. All right. And then it says, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we also be, we shall be also what? In the likeness of his resurrection. Listen. Amen. The resurrection, which Paul speaks of, is a resurrection of new life in Christ Jesus. All right. It's not talking about you dying. It's talking about having a new life in Christ. Somebody say a new life in Christ. Life in Christ. As a believer of Christ, we have died to sin and have been resurrected in righteousness through the power of God. Amen. You can experience a resurrection in Christ. This is what Jesus meant when he told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Mm -hmm. Resurrection represents a new life. Resurrection represents a rebirth. Mm -hmm. Resurrection represents a new beginning. Uh -huh. it, it represents a new start. Somebody say a new start. A new start. It represents a, a renewal of all things new. Lazarus was not the last resurrection Jesus performed. Through Christ's own resurrection, the power of God has been performing resurrections for over 2,000 years. If you are born again, you too experienced a resurrection. Yes. Jesus was to perform a resurrection in your life right now. The Bible said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? A new creature. That word creature uh, is more than just a new creation. It means, listen, a new species. All right. Come on now. <laughs> Amen. Come on. 
Somebody say all things new. All it just don't mean Come a new creature. It means that you are totally diametrically different from the way you were before. Right. <laughs> Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new species. All things are what? Passed away. Behold, all things are what? Become new. You can experience a resurrection, listen, from the troubles of your past. Let me talk about it. Somebody say resurrection. So every time what people think about resurrection from the day, they think about something physical. No, no. You can experience a resurrection from the troubles of the past. Ain't that good? You can experience a resurrection from the afflictions of life. You can experience a resurrection from life of a life of heartache and pain. It doesn't matter how deep you have been buried. It doesn't matter how long you've been buried. Amen. You can experience a resurrection. Amen. You can experience a resurrection from cancer. Yeah. You can experience a resurrection from the coronavirus. Yes, you can experience a resurrection from muscular dystrophy. Yeah. You can experience a resurrection from destruction. You can experience a resurrection from death and the grave. Resurrection represents the ending of the old and the beginning of the new. Amen. God wants to perform resurrections on this first Sunday of the month of June. Amen. This 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 day is it, it, very similar to the day Jesus rose from the dead. Yes. Jesus Himself rose from the dead on the first day of the week. Yes. This is the first day of ain't this Sunday. Yes. This is the first day of the week. This is the first day of the week. Jesus rose from the dead in a garden. Somebody say in a garden. Yeah. Let's go to John 19. John 19. St. John, Gospel of John 19, verse 41, verse 42. This is what the Holy Spirit told me to tell somebody here. In John 19, verse 41 and verse 42, it says, Now in the place where he was crucified, that was a what? A garden. That was a garden. The, in fact, manifest presence in Hebrew means the Garden of Eden. Listen, now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a what? A new, new sepulcher. sepulcher. Wherein was never man yet laid. There laid they what? Jesus, therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day. In other words, this was the day of preparation for the Passover. Today we're celebrating what? Passover through our communion. And then it says, for the sepulcher was not at hand. They had to hurry up and to put Jesus down from the cross because it was the day of preparation of the Passover. And there was a, 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 a in the garden, there was a, 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 a tomb nearby the garden. And then it says, uh, uh, for the sepulcher was nigh at hand. Uh, in other words, due to the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus in the garden. Why is Jesus in a garden? What's the symbolic? What's the symbolism here? Why is he in a garden? Sin began in a garden. Oh, y'all ain't got it yet. Sin began in a garden, the Garden of Eden. Adam, the old man, died to righteousness in a garden. He died. He says, surely, so the day you eat it, you shall sure what? Surely die. So Adam, the old man, died to righteousness. In a garden, Jesus, the new man, rose in righteousness in a garden. Listen here. I got to move on, but listen here. God, I heard Sister, Sister, uh, uh, Minister, uh, Sister, Minister Victoria said this the other, other Sunday. God found man hiding from his presence. Amen. Remember that? Amen. God found man hiding behind a bush. I guess I, was, I always think about by the bush. Hiding from his presence in a garden due to sin. Sin will make you hide from the presence of God. All right. Yeah. Have you ever uh, 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 heard people uh, uh, in church and they, they just couldn't stay still uh, uh, because sin will make you hide yourself? But let, let's go to Genesis chapter three, verse eight. Genesis chapter three, verse eight. Here, here is here is what it says in Genesis chapter three, verse eight through ten. 
uh, it says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Everybody got that? Yeah. Just is that 3 verse 8. And Adam and his wife hid themselves, what? From the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Listen, this is, what, this, is what, this is what's going on here. God would come walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. Notice what it says. He says, and hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. What's going on? God would often come walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. His presence was like a rushing wind among the trees. So when they heard the trees rushing, they knew that Jesus, he did it every day. He, he had the cool in the He would come on the evening breeze and the wind would start rushing. Oh, 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 there he called back. Because he's like, he's like a rushing mighty wind. His presence was that of a rushing wind amongst the trees. And then it says, and the Lord called, the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, what? Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked. And I hid myself. Seeing triumph over man in a garden. However, Jesus triumphed over sin in a garden. There's something special about a garden. The creation of man began in a garden. The relationship between God and man began in a garden. God communed with man in fellowship in a garden. There's an old song for the camera that says, I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. And the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God disclosing, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. That's something about a garden. And, and when, 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 you see, when Adam was cast from the garden, it was, oh my God, this is the place where I all, this is the place where I commune with, and now I no longer can, can, can commune. I never can walk with him. And I can't, I can't hear him tell me that I'm his own. And the joy we shared as we carried there, I, I no longer, I'm going to able to experience the tomb of Jesus was located in a garden. Jesus was resurrected in a garden. Right now, you are in the garden of his manifest presence. Who am I preaching to in here? I said right now, you are in a garden of his manifest presence. Listen, today, this is the day to rise up from your tomb. Who am I preaching to in here? I ain't got no, ain't no power here. Look it up there, sister. Listen here. This is the day to rise up from your tomb. You will rise again. Hallelujah. I said you will. Look at yourself coming back. Coming you back. will rise again. Rise. You have come on the first day of the week yeah. into his manifest presence to experience a resurrection. Yeah. Look at your name say, I came. On the first day of the, the week, of the week. Into, his into his presence to experience a resurrection. Experience a resurrection. Somebody give God some Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory Somebody give me God. some power right here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm good. I'm good. I'm Praise good. God. Uh, I don't know about you. But I'm about to have a resurrection. Y'all thought I was just preaching to y'all. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm about to have a resurrection from the things which have held me bound yeah. in the grave of life. Amen. I'm about to experience a resurrection. Can I testify this morning? Come on I'm about to experience a resurrection from lack and poverty. I'm about to experience a re I wish I had somebody who would agree with me. I'm about to have a resurrection from sickness and infirmity. Resurrection 
represents a new beginning. Yeah. Only Jesus brings resurrection. Amen. In fact, he is resurrection. Amen. All resurrections are the work of Jesus. Look at your name and say, my God, my God. does resurrections. Resurrection. Anybody need a resurrection in their home? Oh, I wish I had somebody who believed God. The resurrection of Christ is not some futuristic event in the distant future, but for your present situation. Jesus is not just future resurrection. He is, I am resurrection. He is not some just future resurrection. He's resurrection right now. Jesus told Martha, I like how he said, you know, Martha, they were some rich people. Jesus hung around some rich folks. Uh, they weren't all broke. They were very well off. Mary and Martha and were very well off. It, 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 that's where Jesus would often spend his time once he was he was he wanted to take uh take some vacation time. He went he went down he went down to a Gulf Shores. In, uh, in, in John chapter eleven, verse twenty three, it says Jesus speaks to Martha and said, "Thy brother shall rise again." Now she's thinking futuristic. Isn't that right? Yeah. Now, when he said that, he like, I know he shall, he shall, you know, yeah. eventually he shall. No, no, no. Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know. She thinks she know. I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection of the last day. She said, no, good, you messed up. <laughs> Jesus said unto her, I am. Look at that, say he is. he is. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Jesus is the resurrector. He is your resurrector right now. Jesus is the resurrection of the present of the past, present, and future. You don't have to wait for a future healing. Jesus has power. He has, he has resurrection power. Jesus has, he has the power to resurrect healing in your body right now. Jesus has resurrection power. Somebody say resurrection power. Jesus' resurrection from the dead is evident that he has resurrection power. Why? Because he rose from the dead. Resurrection power is in the hands of Jesus. The resurrection power of God has now been awakened in your body. Lift your hands up. Let us pray. I say the resurrection power of God is, has now been awakened in your body. Uh, I want you to go to Romans quickly. Go to Romans chapter 8 verse 11. Notice what it says. He talk about the resurrection power of the believer is, 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 in, the, is, in, the, is in those who believe God. Romans 8 11 says, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also what? Quicken. quicken. The word quicken means to give life to your mortal bodies by his spirit that what? Dwell in you. you. Okay. I'm going to say it again. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, that same spirit. That raised up Jesus. Somebody said resurrection, resurrection power. That same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwelling in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead uh, shall also give life or quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. The resurrection power of God has now been awakened. Has now been awakened in your body. Uh, lift those hands up. Spirit of the living God. The killer of all life. Let your resurrection power quicken our mortal bodies. Right now. Somebody said right now. Right now. Let your resurrection power heal our mortal bodies. Somebody shout right now. In the name. In the name. That's above every name. Of the beloved son Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Somebody give God a praise in the house right now. Resurrection. It's about the bringing forth of life. Right. Resurrection is about the bringing forth of life. Jesus, I have come that you may have life. Jesus is resurrecting healing right now in your body. 
Anybody sick in this place? You about to be healed right now by the resurrection power of God. Jesus is resurrecting healing right now in your body, in your soul, in your spirit. That which is dying or has died is, is being transformed into life through the resurrection power of God. I'm prophesying to somebody. I don't know who. The bondage of sickness has been broken. I said the bondage of sickness. Uh, uh, Deacon Nick, you need to go and start laying hands on people. Uh, not in here. I'm talking about what I'm talking about. I'm talking about because you got the, you got his resurrection power. Listen, Jesus is resurrecting healing right now. The bondage of sickness is being broken. Healing is breaking forth. At the, as the breaking forth of many waters, I say healing is breaking forth. I wish somebody who knew who knew who, who, what you got. Look, says you got to know what you got so you can use what you got. Healing is breaking forth as the breaking forth of, of many waters. Healing is bringing, it's coming forth right now. Healing is coming into existence. The presence of healing is being manifested in your body right now. I see it right now. I see it right now. I see it right now, Vicky. I see it right now. Healing. The presence of healing is being manifested in your body. I said the presence of healing. I see it right now. I see it in your, I see it in your belly. Healing is bringing forth, breaking forth. Amen. The presence of healing is being manifested in your body. The dry bones are coming back to life. Everybody know about Ezekiel chapter 37. The dry bones are coming to life. The valley of dry bones in Ezekiel chapter 37 represents a resurrection on a grand scale. It was a whole army, thousands upon thousands, came back to life at one time. God is performing resurrections, listen, on a colossal scale. As in the days of Ezekiel, God still performs congregational Resurrections. He still performed massive resurrections at the same time. Does anybody have anything in their life that needs to be resurrected? You don't have to wait another day. The I am the resurrection is here right now to bring those things back to life again. You, 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 you want your finances resurrected? You're in the right place. Look to your neighbor and say, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it right now. Listen, in fact, I hear the sound of a resurrection. I hear the sound. Come on, give me some bass, give me some bass, sister. I hear the sound of a resurrection. I hear the sound of an abundance of resurrection. I wish. Oh, come on, give me some. Give me some. There you go. Give me some. Listen, I hear the sound of a resurrection. Look to your neighbor and say, Happy Resurrection Sunday. That which has held you in bondage, that which have held you in the grave, can never hold you in bondage again. Illnesses that may have held your body down for many years, uh, 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 Deacon, Deacon Hayeswood is about to be broken. Sickness that have held you down is about to be broken. The Bible says in Romans 6 and 9, Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead yeah. dieth no more. Death has no more dominion over him. Look what he said. He said once Christ rose from the dead you can't kill him no more. All right. Now that you've been risen from the dead now that you've been risen from your sickness that sickness that held you bondage can no longer hold you in bondage anymore. Because what happened to Christ will happen to you. He says, knowing that being raised from the dead, dying no more, death has no more dominion. Look your neighbor and say, cancer has no more dominion over me. Because Christ rose from the dead, that which held him in the grave for three days can no longer hold him down. You can't put him back on the cross and bury him again. Uh -huh. It won't work because he triumphed over death. He triumphed over the grave. Listen here. You can't. Christ's resurrection 
was a sign of dominion. Christ's resurrection was a sign of dominion over that which held him bound. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, listen, is the sign of victory for us. All right. I thank God he rose from the dead yes, because he gives us victory. Yes. But thanks be to God who giveth us the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a sign of victory. It's a sign of dominion over hell, death, and the grave. Isaac, you, you may be seated. Isaac experienced a financial resurrection. Didn't he? Oh, somebody don't know you by Isaac. Isaac experienced a resurrection of financial prosperity during a time of famine, during a time of scarcity. This is the season of financial resurrection. Yes. What did I say? This is the season of financial resurrection. This year will be your best year of finances. That you've had so far. Oh, anybody been blessed this year? Isaac experienced a resurrection of financial prosperity during the time of fact. This is the season of financial resurrection. The chains of poverty is about to be broken forever in your family, in your life. Somebody give God a praise in the house. It's time to look to Jesus for all of your help and needs. Stop looking to man and start looking to Jesus. My yes. wife and I, we was talking about the stimulus. I said, baby, don't wait on no stimulus check. Amen. Listen here. Listen here. Uh, in Genesis chapter 26, mm -hmm. <laughs> Isaac stopped focusing on the famine and start focusing on the word of God. What you focus upon will often determine what you receive. All right. If you focus on the right thing, the right thing will come to you. Yes. Right. you. If you focus on the wrong thing, uh -oh, uh -huh. the same will happen. Yeah. But Paul said in Colossians 3 and 2, set your affection, set your focus, set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. In the wilderness, I got a little bit more time. In the wilderness, the children of Israel failed to focus on what they had all right, and chose to focus on what they didn't have. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're not grateful for what we got. All right. yeah. And we want what our neighbor got. They got a new Mercedes and so we're not happy with the Toyota we got. Even though it's fine, it's working fine. Uh, but the children of Israel failed to focus on what they had. They had God, but they didn't want him. I don't know what you want if you don't have him, but you don't want him. They failed to focus on what they had, and they chose to focus on what they did have. They failed to appreciate the God who always supplied their needs. All right. Moreover, listen, trouble is often the lenses Listen, listen, uh, 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 a pandemic, a pandemic of trouble, I will let you know that will correct your focus. Okay, you want it? The, the children of Israel fail to appreciate the God who always supplied the need. But a pandemic of trouble, I've I, I never seen so many uh, artists now and, 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 and rap artists and musicians now talking about the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because a pandemic of trouble mm -hmm. will change and correct your focus. Amen. Trouble can cause you to readjust your attention from ourselves and focus on God. Right. Trouble will often correct our focus. Yeah. Moreover, trouble is often the lenses, listen, God uses for us to see him. It's the lenses by which trouble. Now trouble comes, then you see God. You ain't seen God. The Bible says when the King Uz I, I died, he said, I, 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 I said, I saw the Lord and I saw him lifted up. Because it's only when trouble came that he now sees God. Trouble is often the lenses God uses for us to see him. The Hebrew boys 
along with King Nebuchadnezzar and his officials, saw the Son of God in the heat of the fiery furnace. He wasn't found anywhere else, but when trouble came, guess what? God showed up. Before the Hebrew boys encountered the Son of God incarnate, they were in trouble with King Nebuchadnezzar for not bowing to the golden image. God can often be seen during fiery trials of trouble and affliction. The Son of God would never have been seen if it wasn't for the fiery furnace. Troubles bring out the best in God. Oh, y'all don't understand what I'm saying. Trouble brings out the best in God. God miracles are often revealed in times of trouble. Mom, I believe this. I believe that the coronavirus pandemic of trouble, that it will cause us to look and turn to God. All right. yeah. Yeah. When, when, it, when they knock on your door, you'll turn to God. All right. When we turn to God, we will see that he's a very present help yes. in the time of trouble. Yeah. Listen here. Uh, and go to Numbers chapter 21. We're going to close it up. In Numbers chapter 21, verse 5 through 9. Numbers chapter 21, verses 5 through 9. Here in the wilderness, the children of Israel face a dilemma. Now notice that they focus on what they didn't have. Instead of focusing on the God that was with them. Read. And the people, the people spake against, against God, God and against Moses. Read. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? Mm -hmm. For there is no bread, neither is there any water. And I was so loath at this light. We hate this horrible manna that we that you call bread, this light bread. Uh huh. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. There was a pandemic of death because of diseases and uh, because of the. The, 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 the poison from the serpent. Read. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man when he beheld the serpent of brass. When he looked up at the serpent of brass, uh huh, he lived. He was healed. In the wilderness, the children of Israel focused on what was in their hands. They focused on the manna, or mm. uh, they focused on the lack of water. Our focus should not be on what's in our hands, but what's in God's hands. Amen. The children of Israel had to realign their focus toward God. Unfortunately, if they chose not to focus on God by refusing to look up at the pole of the serpent of brass, the result would have been a painful, excruciating death due to the poison venom of the snakes. God told Moses to tell the people to look up, to look upon the brass serpent on a pole. I mentioned this on Wednesday night, a couple of Sundays, a couple of Wednesday night. Why a serpent on a pole? Why not a depiction of an angelic being on a pole? Why not an image of a sun, a celestial sky? Why a snake of all things? Why a snake on, isn't that supposed to be the devil? Why a snake on a pole? Why a snake of all things? A serpent, listen, is often depicted as a sign of trouble. You know, you see a snake, you, 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 it, I, I, I know if I see a snake, guess what, I'm going to jump back. I don't know about you, I ain't going to come toward. Uh, but a serpent is often a sign of trouble. It is often a sign of danger and hazard. It is a sign of peril. We must understand that the people had been bitten by what? By fiery, deadly serpents. The serpent on the pole during the time of Moses Represented being bitten in the desert by fiery serpents. The serpent on the pole uh, was a picture of what they had been exposed to. They had been exposed to a snake. Listen, likewise, Jesus on the cross is a picture or a portrait 
are the cure of whatever we have been exposed to or what we have been bitten by. We had been exposed to sin. Like the snake on a pole, Jesus was the symbol of sin on the cross. But he had been made sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Jesus became what we needed. If you looked at the pole, it meant that you needed to be healed from the fiery serpent. Jesus became what we needed. The, the children of Israel had been bitten by fiery, deadly snakes. However, if the children of Israel would look up, look, this is time to look up. If the children of Israel would look up to what they needed, they needed healing from a snake. There was a snake on a pole, they would be healed. One day, we were infected with the venomous snake bite of sin. And whatever, however, if we would look to Jesus, who became sin for us on a pole of a cross, we would be healed and live. Somebody say, I'm looking to Jesus. The cure, the cure for the venomous snake bite was a snake on a pole. In the same way, the cure for the venom of sin was Jesus on a pole of the cross. Jesus is the cure of our venom. Jesus is the cure for toxins. Jesus is the cure for poisons. Jesus is the cure for diseases. Jesus is the cure for infirmities in your body. He is freedom from trouble. He is the cure from danger. He is delivered from hazard and perils. It has been said that the stripes that Jesus endured from a whip called the cat of, cat of nine tails, the cat of nine tails uh, was a whip that split on the end. And it had bone, it had metal on the end, so that when it hit the flesh, it would grip off the flesh. It would tear off the flesh. And so he had been beaten with a cat of nine tail. It was split on the end, it would put metal and, and bone, so that when it hit, it would rip. And so, listen, he had been, he, the strife that he endured from a whip called the cat of nine tails represents every major diseases of mankind. Many theologians believe that Jesus received 39 stripes upon his body. If that's the case, one of the stripes Jesus bore on the cross was for the coronavirus. There is healing for the coronavirus. One of the stripes for Jesus was the healing of muscular dystrophy. Another stripe sustained of Jesus was the healing of cancer. Another stripe and covered upon Jesus was the healing of high blood pressure. Another strike in doing of Jesus was the healing of diabetes. Another strike ensued upon Jesus was the healing of arthritis. Another strike engraved upon Jesus was the healing of heart disease. Another strike in doing of Jesus was the healing of respiratory disease. Listen here. Strike, strike, strike. By his stripes you are. Because he represents whatever you have been affected with. Yes, Lord. Thank you, oh, Jesus. Jesus. Another strike endured, suffered of Jesus, was the healing of skin diseases. Right. Another strike inflicted upon Jesus was the healing of stiffness and knee pain and back pain and leg pain. And you ought to say when you feel still, I buy his stripes uh, because it, there is a strike for what you call it. Hallelujah. You. Listen, Thank you, Jesus. if you have been exposed to the coronavirus, Jesus is the cure. Amen. Look up to the pole. Yes, Look up to the cross. For your vaccine of the coronavirus. The serpent on the pole during the days of ancient Israel in the book of Exodus is a picture of Jesus on the hillside called Calvary. Jesus, the Son of God, died on a wooden pole on a cross. We all have seen pictures of a snake on a pole. Uh, uh, and, and we often see it um, as a medical sign, a physician sign. We see a snake. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You see a snake on a pole. Uh, it represents, if a snake on a pole is a physician sign, then Jesus on a pole of a cross is the sign of the great physician. The children of Israel found out as they
they looked to the serpent on a pole, they were cured. They discovered that although bitten by the fatal poisonous venomous bite of the serpent, they were cured by looking to the serpent on the pole. The brass image of the serpent is a portrait of Jesus. All right. We must look to Jesus for healing and protection from pestilence, from diseases, from sickness and infirmity. The Bible says, look it unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. Jesus disregarded the shame of the cross. That's what it means by despising, despising the shame. Jesus disregarded the shame of the cross. It was shameful to die on the cross. Why was it shameful? The worst kind of shame was to die on the cross. To all the shame, your nakedness was exposed for all to see. In the garden, they were naked. Come on, Pastor. Y'all don't get the correlation. Jesus was exposed. He was naked. On he, I know you see the picture, and there's a there's a there's a garment around his loins. No. He was naked on the cross. And they, the Bible says it were all through it. And, and they, the Bible says when they looked at him, many turned away, turned their head. Because he was exposed, they didn't turn their head because because he they, uh, uh, they, they were they were regretful. They turned their head because he was shameful. Don't don't look at don't, baby. Don't look at it. Don't look at that. Ugh, children shouldn't be seeing stuff like that. Women would turn their heads because he was shameful. He, he was exposed for all to see because what happened in the garden had to happen to Jesus. And the Bible says, and I sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Notice this, the writer of Hebrews says, looking unto Jesus. It didn't say look to Jesus. Somebody say looking unto Jesus. Looking, unto Jesus. looking implies a continual pursuit of Christ. It, it represents a constant practice of seeking the face of Jesus. You don't look to Jesus one time. You look at, you're looking unto Jesus every day. How many looking unto Jesus? The author and the finisher. Looking unto Jesus is not a one-time event, but it is a lifetime event. Let give God a praise in the house. The snake on the pole represented what the people had been bitten of. Jesus on the cross represent that which we had been bitten of. We had been bitten by the by the bite, the poisonous of sin. Mm -hmm. And Jesus became sin for us on the cross. Amen. And throughout the Old Testament, throughout the Old Testament, throughout Genesis, throughout Deuteronomy, the Exodus, it is a reflection of Jesus that was to come. And so the old points to the new. And the new points back to the Old Testament. And it's all about Jesus. Yeah. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Don't have your faith in man. Don't have your faith in Muhammad. Don't have your faith in 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 in, 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 in Buddha, Buddhism. Jesus is the author and the finisher. He is Alpha and Omega. He is the author and the finisher what? of our faith. Looks and they say, only believe. Listen here. If this word have been a blessing to you, we want you to give as God has purpose in your heart. Sister Janice, there is a strike for muscular dystrophy. 